What's up guys, Gary here with self.dev. In this video, we are gonna do LinkedIn's front-end developer assessment. I noticed they added some new ones, so we're gonna check it out, see how it is. Front-end developer uh, covers CSS, CSS layouts, HTML, JavaScript, performance. So let's do this. Um, before we get going though, this is just for practice, or not just for practice, this is like real for me, but this is just for informational purposes. I might fail. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So here we go, start. All right, which image matches the flex layout defined in this style rule? Display flex, uh, margin left auto. Wait, no, I wanted to click that answer. This one. Oh wait, it's targeting the last child. Uh, okay, so this one, huh? Can we test that real quick? Yeah, oh wait, there's more than just those. Okay, gotcha. No, 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 that doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's gotta be B. Okay, cool, next. Variables declared in the let keyword have what kind of scope, block scope? When might an empty alt attribute be the correct value when it is like a background image or it's not like, it's purely decorative? Yeah, that's what it is. Um, when the image has come from a CMS, that wouldn't make sense. Um, when you cannot think of useful alt text, nope, that's a horrible answer. When you don't think it would be interesting to someone who cannot see it, also not true. Um, when it's purely decorative. All right, so which ele HTML element w is not considered a landmark element? Ooh, what is a landmark element? I've never seen that before. Let's Google that real quick. Landmark element. <sighs> this is not cheating because when you're a developer, you will Google stuff every day of your life. So, hmm. all right. Um, how much time we got left? A minute, nine seconds. This is a lot of time for this question. Um, it is important to understand a real landmark. HTML section elements are used without understanding. I think it's this UL. No, this form, main. Okay, hold on. Default landmark role aside. Footer, form, header, main, nav, section. Form, okay, yeah, it is UL. Okay, sweet. Because form, nav, main, those are all landmark elements according to this, so we're gonna go with that. Which description correctly describes the initial value with the initial values of flex items if the only thing you have done is apply flex to their parent. Um, it's the initial like row, items display in a row, lined up at the start and do not stretch to fill the container. Yeah, they don't stretch to fill the container. Column, column, row, items display in a row, line up at the start and stretch to fill the container. Nope. Uh, you have to do like justify content space around, between, or one of those three justify content things to make it stretch all the way across. Um, wait, let me read this question again just to make sure I didn't miss anything because I like to miss details. Um, which description correctly describes the initial values of flex items if the only thing you have done is apply display flex? Yes, it's A. All right, so next one. Which HTML element represents either a scalar value with a known range or a functional value? I've never had to use those before. Data list sounds correct. Um, what is a HTML, let's Google HTML scalar value. The meter element. I'm, gonna, I'm pretty sure it's that one because it, this is what came up when we searched for that, but the HTML meter element represents either a scalar value within a known range or a fractional value. Fractional, not functional. But we're gonna go with meter. Next, um, which line of code is, if applied to all flex items in a flex container, would cause each flex item to take up equal share of total width of the container? For example, there are four items that would get 25% each. Um, oh, I don't use the flex shorthand that much. CSS flex, what is the shorthand? Flex none, okay, so flex grow, shrink, and flex basis, so we'd need one for the, this. Um, shrink would be one, two, and then basis would be auto, I believe. Honestly, I don't use flex grow, shrink, or basis that much either. But yeah, we're gonna go with C, because that sounds the most right. If that's not right, let me know in the comments below. Next, all right, what is the correct way to initialize an array of galaxies in JavaScript? Let galaxies, that's an object, kind of, sort of. That's not how you do an array. It's like you use this um, 
Brackets. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. Galaxies equal array. Okay, we can. I guess this will work. No, not string. Yeah, none of these are like how I would do it. That's all weird. Like I'd have var galaxies equal this because this, unless this has been declared previously in the scope, it's gonna be like, hey, this is not declared anywhere. What? The, what is galaxies, bro? Um, and then these two are like these aren't really arrays. Do what does string that do? Let's JavaScript string. How much time we got left on this? 30 seconds? All right, we might have to guess on this one. Oh, I don't think the string thing is right. I'm gonna go with this one. Can you declare an array with that? Let, because both of these are, is there something with a let where you can where you can declare an array like that? Oh, I needed to pull up console and test this, dang it. All right, we're gonna go with C because that's always the right answer when you don't know the correct answer. How many columns will there be given in this code? Wait, how, how many columns will there be given this code? Container width 600, column width 200, column gap five, 50 pixels. Depends on how many columns are in the HTML. Like if you just have like one thing in the HTML kind of, like there's only gonna be one column technically. Um, there might like kind of be th more than that, but you know. Um, column width 200, width 600. So we're gonna go with there's gonna be, okay, and then there's a column gap of 50 pixels. So the answer is two because, let me defend my answer real quick. With the width is 600, right? And then you have two columns, that's 400. And then there's a column gap of 50 pixels, so that's 450. And then if you have 50 on the sides, I don't know if it does the sides or not. That's another 100, so that's like 550. So 246, the, like if we did three, then we couldn't have a column gap of 50 pixels. That wouldn't work, right? So I'm pretty sure it's two. Which style will change the color of the text? Color, this one. So we're getting this tag and then we're saying color is cyan. Which choice is not a value of the type attribute of the input element? Address, date, password, range. I don't think address is. Input, address. Actually, let's do input attributes. And then A-D-D-R-E-S-S, -S. nope, nothing for address, but if we do date, there is a date. If we do range, there is a range, and then we know there's a password already, but we can search for it here, so P-A-S-S-W-O-R-D. Cool, so there's a password one too. So it's address. A video of your web page does not display, and the console shows an error about mixed content. What is happening? You're not using HTTPS. Um, the, the web page is using a doc type which renders it incapable of displaying video in additional, um, no, that's not it. Your browser does not support HTML5 video. What browser doesn't nowadays? Uh, the video is a, well, like, we're not, like, Internet Explorer, nah, nobody likes that anyway. The video is from a source that cannot be displayed in your location for legal reasons. Hmm, interesting, no, it's this one. Uh, that's why that's what you get mixed content warnings for Because you're getting like HTTPS and HTTP and that's like mixing content, you know We want it to be secure. So always use HTTPS you find this code in the style sheet What is it being used for CF after so we're making a pseudo element with the content that has nothing in it display as block and clear as both Can pseudo elements be seen by screen readers fixing the Internet Explorer 11 bug? clearing floats in a float based layout Creating a new block formatting context. Clearing floats. That's what this clear thing does, I believe. I haven't had a clear floats in a while. Yeah, we're gonna go with C. Clearing floats in a float based layout. Which choice is not part of the CSS box model? Margin, border, padding, paragraph. Hit the paragraph. If we can, like, we can inspect a page here and then we can go to bring this over here so you guys can see it. We go to the bottom and then we have content, padding, border, margin, boom, point proven. Um, which statement is true when an HTML tag has been depreciated? It employs code that can only be viewed on a desktop computer. I don't think that's true. It is obsolete and it is not recommended for use in marking web content. That's true. Um, it employs code that will require users to update their browsers. That's not what depreciated means. It employs incorrect syntax and will cause the browser to crash. Also not true. Um, they, if they depreciate a tag and then all of a sudden it makes browsers crash, that would break a lot of stuff that was historically made with that tag, so they can't do that. So they're basically saying, hey, don't use this tag anymore. We don't want to support this. 
they have to support it like the browsers do because they don't want to break older websites. So, B, how do we do? You're the top 5% of people of the 17K people who took this. Only 17K people who took this. So I missed like one or two questions, I guess. Can I, I still can't see. They still haven't made it to where you can see how many questions you got wrong. But hopefully this helps you guys out. Hopefully you learned something. Um, if you know which ones I got wrong, let me know in the comments below. If you want to come hop in Discord, I have a Discord in the description. You can come talk tech with me or other aspiring developers or current developers. And we also got a little accountability group in there where we meet every week and kind of talk about our goals for the week. Um, so if you want to get in on that, that'd be cool. And if you want to get my resume template, I have a link to that in the description as well. This is the resume I used when I was applying to tech jobs. Um, so it's my resume with no tech experience on it. It's just like, hey, this is what I learned. Um, these are my projects, etc. And uh, if you need practice projects, check out selftaught-dev.com. That's in the description as well, but I've been making Adobe XD mockups of practice projects for devs for the past year. So check that out if you are so inclined. And uh, I think that's about it. So I will see you guys next time. Peace. Round one.